Okay. What's up, world? Coach Brian Hurst here with... Coach Maul! Yeah! Here with another edition of Remote Warrior Recap. Today's practice is primarily kettlebell focused, uh, but we've got some body weight options for you for those of you not training with kettlebells today. So, as always, spend about seven to 10 minutes getting your body warmed up in whatever way you need to do. Then we're getting into movement prep. We've got three rounds of three movements. First is a get up. You can go body weight, you can go bottoms up, or you can go with a nice lightweight. Remember movement prep, we're getting the body ready for the work to come, so we don't want to ex expend too much energy here. From all these nice slow and controlled movements, notice things like elbow is staying locked out, wrist is staying neutral, core is staying engaged. Great job, Molly. Thank Great you. job. I'm proud of you. You're going to do one on both sides. Next up, we've got 10 glute bridges. Good setup here. So we're about hip width. Fingertips should barely be able to graze your heels. And then we're feeling that contraction at the top for just a moment. So we're not just bouncing up and down through those. Molly's showing another advanced variation here with a little reach. Getting a little more abdominal work in there as well. After 10, then we're going to jump on up and we're going to do 10 drop squats. Feet are together, then we're dropping down. Touch the floor to help make sure that you get into a nice deep squat. If uh, dropping or in that fast movement, jumping is not a good option for you, standard body weight squats. Maybe go a little bit slower on the way down to really fill out the movement a little more. After three rounds, you're going into four rounds of strength. This time we've got four movements. We're doing six to eight reps of each. So, first one here is going to be a suitcase reverse lunge. Suitcase being that the bells are on the outside of the body. Nice big step back. We're going to do six to eight reps per side before switching sides. Um, if you don't have doubles, go single bell. That's totally fine. Then, we're going to get set up on the handles and do a nice push up. Making sure that your shoulders are right over your elbows, elbows are right over the wrists to help support that load and make sure that you don't fall off of those kettlebells. If you're, whoa, Molly is jumping in my way. <laughs> if you are not as comfortable doing that over the bells, do them from the floor. Um, you can bring the surface up to you, whether it's a countertop, table, couch, anything like that. Use that full body plank. Doing it from the knees is an okay option as well. Next up, we've got double kettlebell clean. Woo! Six to eight reps. Nice strong height. Boom. Breathing with the hips. Notice. Boom. Need a little pause there at the top of the rack position. So we're not just rushing through the movement. We're taking full ownership. Right, Molly? Right. Right. Then, fourth and final movement in our strength is a gorilla row. So you're doing six to eight per side here as well. Nice wide base. Keeping the hips relatively low, at least lower than your shoulders. And then we're rowing back towards that pocket. If you would like to uh, do a modification there, you can do seesaw rows. So both arms are working simultaneously as a variation. Um, let's go through a couple body weight options in case you do not have equipment for this strength portion. So suitcase, uh, reverse lunges, we'll go body weight. Boom. Push-ups on the handles, you can either push up from the floor or you can do some floor presses. Molly's showing a nice glute bridge option here, so keeping those hips elevated is going to make this floor press a little more challenging. You can do that with one weight in either arm or you can have one weight in both arms and press uh, overhead that way. Then, instead of cleans, You've got the option for a curl and press, boom, or you can do bird dogs. Flipping over, so we're in a tabletop position, extending opposite arm and leg, bringing elbow to knee. You can also elevate your shins and do the bird dog from an elevated position to make it much more challenging, which is good. Challenge yourself. Then instead of uh, gorilla roads with a weight in each arm, We've got single arm rows, so we're gonna be in this high plank position here. The reach, and then row towards your hip. Hold that position. If you wanna make it even more challenging, lift that opposite leg. Oh! Ah! <laughs> awesome, awesome. 
Next, we are going into uh, a couple minutes of swing prep. We would suggest taking a few minutes to do some power swings. So getting nice set up. Boom. Pausing at the bottom, assessing how the rep went, making any adjustments you need, and then going into another rep. About three power swings at a time before you step back, shake it out, assess whether you need a lighter weight, heavier weight, or if the weight is appropriate. Then, we're getting into our final portion here with an EMOM, every minute on the minute for 12 total minutes of two-handed swings. You're gonna aim for 10 to 15 reps. Of course, quality is going to be the deciding factor on how many reps you go with. If you prefer single arm or double bell swings, you can totally go with that option here. We're suggesting heavy two-handed swings. Um, if you do not have any weight to swing, uh, or kettlebells rather, a couple options here would be any like full body strength or ballistic movement, hinge jumps, squat jumps, uh, burpees, man makers, human makers rather, um, or eight count bodybuilders is a, another really great one. Molly is a professional at these because of the amount of repetitions she gets in. So one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Perfect. So mix it up however you need. Um, kick some ass for 12 minutes and then you are all done. Take a couple minutes, maybe do some belly breathing afterwards to help calm that nervous system down. Anything else? Have a great fucking day. Yeah! Stay metal.